Hey everybody, I am back and I am here in Philippi, West Virginia and I am here checking out the museum, the Barber County Museum. Uh, it is a very awesome place, uh, the history of Barber County, but one thing it does have that a lot of museums may not have and that is mummies. There are two mummies here and we are going to uh, check them out and learn a little bit about those mummies. Pretty cool. model of the covered bridge right there. Check out that flood right there. Wow. Dr. Myers Remedies. No cure all to be found in this case. Are you sick? So this is the uh, actual uh, medicine that was used by Dr. Myers when he was, he was here. This is manufactured by the Myers Remedy Company of Philippi, West Virginia. Pretty cool. Jordan wheelchair and clock. Year 1895, Dr. J.W. Myers began the practice of medicine in Nesterville, Barber County. And there's the medicine he's got there. This is right from his medical bag. <laughs> There's an old bedpan. Look at that bedpan. That's a, that's a fancy bedpan right there. A medical book. This is the drum. This is a drum that was played at the surrender of General Robert E. Lee to General Ulysses S. Grant at a Potomatic Courthouse. Pretty cool. There's a switchboard uh, to uh, J.W. Myers Patients. It was uh, designed and built and operated by Dr. Myers in 1899. 
And now we're going to go see the mummies. So these mummies was created by Graham Hamrick. He was a farmer, uh, inventor, shopkeeper, undertaker. He lived from 1821 to 1899. Um, and the mummification method involved draining the body of fluids through an incision in the abdomen, uh, injecting water, dissolved saltpeter through that incision, placing the body in an airtight box, and then infusing it with sulfur fumes over a long period of time. Um, they know that that's what was done, but they're still not exactly sure how he did it. Um, he got the bodies uh, from the Western State Mental Hospital here in West Virginia. He found at one time uh, they were under someone's someone's bed, um, and uh, and someone turned them in, uh, donated them to to the uh, county. And this was the letter that was actually in one of their pockets. It says, uh, Hospital for the Insane, Dear Brother, I take my pen in hand to write to you to inform you I am well at present and hope those few lines find you well. I have quit taking medicine and I feel better than when I was taken. I have been thinking of coming home for some time, but the doctors still say it is better to stay put. I think I am well as I will never as I will ever get. I suppose my husband is at your house. If he is, you can give him the letter to read as I have never received any from him since I have been here. I will come home as soon as he comes after me, and the Lord being willing, I hope that will be soon. Give my love to all inquiring friends. No more at present. And we uh, currently no, do not know the names of these uh, of these individuals and uh, who they were at all. So uh, they were uh, turned over to uh, to uh, Mr. Hamrick because nobody identified the, these people. Um, so he was able to um, get approval to embalm them. So one story about the mummies uh, is that uh, there's a guy named Bigfoot Byers, George Byers, and uh, there was uh, an arm that was uh, a part of the mummies, uh, well actually a, a separate individual that was mummified, but it was a, only an arm, and he would carry it around town, actually, and he would uh, like take it into a restaurant, set it down on the table, and order his food. Um, after a while, people kind of got uh, would uh, kind of complain about that, and uh, they would ask him not to bring the arm when he uh, came in to dine. I uh, thought that was a little interesting fact. Newspapers. Pip Cassidy. Look at that. That's Lurch Adams family. Lurch Ted Cassidy. Mid 70s.
And uh, I was told here that they're actually going to be making a statue of Ted Cassidy here in Philippi. They're just getting the funds to do it. Pretty cool. And these are the uh, bullets that were taken out of the cover bridge right here? Some of them, yeah. You can see uh, it was either those or these fragments over here. The, we've got some fragments. And those are some, some of them, Phil. But here, these right here in this little case. Oh, Actually, right there, okay. And that was when it was renovated in the uh, mid 90s? Yeah, when we uh, went in there after the, uh, it got burned. Right. They start scraping and they found those bullet holes and they start pulling those out. And that's the actual sword. That's Kelly that helped lead the charge. He's from Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, that is his sword. This is a, uh, a field sword right here. And the two guns, we don't know what happened and, and Charleston can't verify it either. Whether it blew up in his face or it was shot out of his hand. But those things could shoot a thousand yards, no trouble at all. Mm. Now these over here are reenactors. Oh, bank of Philippine money. That's cool. The leg of an antebellum baby grand piano. I was walking on the floor. Those are actual uh, wooden blocks. Hmm. Uh, they have creosote on them from when the railroad cars came through and everything. And the reason was that way back when any sparks or anything that they had, that's why they were wooden floors, that nothing would happen. But this wagon you see right here actually ran up and down the concrete outside and carried the luggage for the people from the train. Uh, now after about 1975 or whatever, this part was just used uh, and they had tools in it and the train would come by and pick up the workers and their tools and they'd go up to Elkins and down to Grafton and work the line. Mm. Helmets here. Mm, check this out. A Vitrola record player. Check it out. So, this right here uh, was originally a train depot at one time. And there is the train tracks. So when I got here, um, the uh, museum was closed. Um, so I looked up on the sign and it said that it's supposed to have been open today. Um, they run on a volunteer basis, so he said there's about like three people that, that uh, help him uh, with it. Uh, and I think because it was raining today, they didn't open it. I think that's what I heard. But uh, I, I had a number for somebody because I called yesterday just to see if, uh, uh, if they'd be open. And uh, the number that I called was disconnected, so I called the city, who, who then got in touch with another person, who actually turns out to be um, my principal from, from when I was in high school here in Philippi. Uh, and uh, he said, hey, uh, I'll be down in like five minutes. Uh, so he, he actually drove down, opened up the museum for me, gave me a short little uh, tour there, and said, you're free to walk around. And and go check out everything. So very nice. So uh, if you ever make it down to uh, Philippi, West Virginia, you got to check out this. This is really cool. All right, so that was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, share if you like the video. I'll see you all in the next one. 
and hope you have a great one.